Let's start with yet another clip of a narcissist trans activist seeking to intimidate and humiliate a poor working man, an immigrant making a living running a pizza stand. Watch as the activist abuses the worker for misgendering him. I look like a girl. I do not understand. You don't? Do I look like a boy or a girl? I am? Me. I think you're a boy. No, I'm a girl. Okay. Okay. What do you think you look like? Sorry. No. Just ugly. <laughs> okay. Oh, it did not end there. He then involves other customers, even offers the slice he's just brought to another customer, costing the poor man business. Here, you could actually have my pizza. Do you like those? Yeah. He's so mean I'm not eating his pizza, so you should have it. Oh, yeah. Fuck him. You enjoy your pizza. Thank you. Bye. Look at him. He's so mean. Do I look like a boy or girl? He's telling me I'm a man. Come on. No. It doesn't take I'm rocket okay. science. I'm a man. He thinks it's funny. Right? It doesn't take rocket science to figure it out. No. Thank you. Enjoy your pizza. Bye. Here's a clue. If you have to keep telling people what you are, perhaps the transformation isn't that convincing. You know, by all means, identify however you want, but bullying and in humiliating, intimidating a working man, someone probably working long hours on minimum wage because they misgendered you, is just ugly and gross. And the narcissist wasn't there, done there yet either. He then attacks the man for being disrespectful and rude. But I'm just telling you, you have to be more respectful. Yeah, you are dumb. You're not embarrassed to be ignorant and rude? I am not good in this. I don't buy that for a minute. <laughs> I think you speak English just fine, my love, because you understood every other sentence we had. Great. Okay, bye. Educate yourself. You know, I want a pizza. What? You know? I would never eat your pizza in a million years. You're so rude. How are you going to tell me I'm a man in a purse and long hair and nails? What a hideous piece of work. Not bad enough calling the poor man ignorant, rude, ugly and much more. He also films the whole thing and posts it for, I don't know, TikTok clout. You would have seen the comments rolling on the, that clip and all the fans agreeing with him, saying there's 600 people watching and everyone knows who this guy is. <sighs> I don't know, perhaps he hoped to get the man fired. All this because a dude working at a pizza shop refuses to pander to your delusions or just simply is confused about the whole thing. And let's have a final look at the narcissist having a meltdown about pronouns. Asking, well, what are your pronouns? What do you think pronouns are? Take a guess. Take a guess. Well, what were the pronouns of the guy in the pizza shop? Now to a lefty losing it on Bill Maher's program. This is Democratic strategist James Carville claiming that Speaker Mike Johnson is a bigger threat to America than the mass murdering terrorists of Al-Qaeda. No, really. Mike Johnson and what he believes is one of the greatest threats we have today to the United States. When, when I'm talking about the policy. I know these people. Well, you're talking about Christian nationalism. That's what absolutely. I was talking about this, at the is, end this, is a, this is a, a bigger <clears throat> threat than Al Qaeda uh, to this country. They, and let me tell you something. They have Speaker of the House. They got probably at least two Supreme Court justices, maybe more. Dave Rubin looking on, bemused, or should that be amused? Uh, Jimmy Carville is too old to be that stupid. Talking about being too old to be a lefty losing it, let's go to this learned pro-Palestinian protester. Funny, you don't, you don't look Palestinian. From the nation to the sea, Pal Palestine will be free. From the nation to the sea? No, from the uh, mountains to the sea. From the mountains to the sea. From the mountains to the sea? Yeah. Which mountains? You don't know, eh? You're an idiot.
Now Christmas is around the corner and if you have any lefties losing it in the family, be prepared because they are coming armed with wind instruments in case you misgender or dead name them. So your family thinks they're going to get away with dead naming you and misgendering you this holiday season? No, they're not. You know why? Because you're a deranged kazoo kid. You play a wind instrument. You take your mouthpiece and you just anytime the wrong pronouns or the wrong name comes out and you be obnoxious as shit because they'll stop real quick. Two words, disinvite and disinherit. Now, let's learn about pangenderism from this lefty who utilizes a triangle to explain the gender spectrum. So when people talk about gender being a spectrum, most probably picture a line with male on one end and female on the other and non-binary in the middle. But I think a better representation of the spectrum is a triangle with the binary genders, male and female up there, non-binary genders over there, and agender over here. And most people are gonna fall somewhere within this triangle. The prefix pan means, in brief, all. So a pangender person, instead of being inside of this triangle, ends up being a circle around the She's in the circle around the triangle. What? I mean, forget about uh, being a pansexual. I'm a panahisexual. It's an octagon around the circle, around the triangle, on top of a sphere. It's very, very diverse. And finally, let's end with a look at the family guy mocking the workification of Christmas celebrations. First, ethnically accurate Jesus goes right here next to Father Mary and Mother Josephine, followed closely by the three genderless wise people on their bird scooters, Tig Nataro for some reason, and of course, the little drummer, them. Because God forbid we call a boy a boy.